Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another movie reaction commentary. Today, we're going to be hopping into the film Fargo. Now, this is completely left field for me. I haven't a clue about what this story, what this writing, the filmmaking, or this, this title is even about. Um, I think the only time I've like heard about it was either my mom tell me or something like that or maybe it was mentioned somewhere at like a distant time but yeah, other than that i'm going in completely blind to this i do know that it's directed by the coen brothers um, whose more films i will bring forth into the channel but if i'm not mistaken i believe they did um no country for old men and i have watched that for those of you who have recommended me that uh that film in the comments multiple times i have watched that i do plan on doing a rewatch of that but yes that is a really uh a good film and one one a good friend a favorite of mine um and if fargo is anything you know in the realm of no uh, country for old men i think i'm gonna fairly enjoy this one i really love the writing and just the characters that were placed within that world of no country and you know i think that it allowed for some really creative um storytelling and very impactful moments that just caught you off guard and you know stray away from the everyday formulaic approach of creating a story or a film in general so i'm really interested in seeing how this is going to be um, brought forth uh you know within this film and i do know this is probably uh earlier than no country so it's gonna be interesting seeing something that was previous to that uh film as well but guys tell me your thoughts on this film i'm gonna stop talking you know the drill if you want to see uh, the full lens or you want to vote on the polls get early access you guys know the drill but patreon link is right below if you want to join the patreon community thank you guys so much you guys see them on the names i mean i'm just forever grateful to you guys seriously if you want to join that and just you know be around just some really good people and genuine uh community then that is the go to it as well hey you know i'll be there too so yeah without further ado i'm going to stop talking let's hop right into fargo Wow. Okay, so this is this is a very true story. Like they're not even kidding around with this. This isn't like what horror movies be doing, and they'd be like, "Oh, yeah, it's a true story." They're like, "No, like this is very real." <laughs> All right, that kind of set the tone. Country for old men, but in Alaska. <laughs> it really does feel like a Western because of the music, really, but also how it's shot, too. Like, just imagine that replaced with horses, you know? <laughs> then you might actually get Red Dead Redemption, too. I'm uh, Jerry Lundegaard. You're Jerry Lundegaard? Yeah. Seems like you're a bit late, man. They already drained some, uh, some, some bottles already. Shep vouched for you and all. I got every confidence here in you fellas. Oh man, they are not, they are not vibing with him at all. What are these guys like, hitmen? Like, what is he doing? It's all worked out. You want your own wife kidnapped? Yeah. Oh. You. What? Even them, even there, they're like, what the heck? Like, why would you want to do that? That's interesting. <laughs> You're tasking us to perform this mission, but you won't, uh, you won't. Oh, fuck it. Let's take a look at that Sierra. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's interesting. Wow. Okay. So he's trying to, like, kidnap his own wife. Hire people to do that. All right. Let's see how that goes. Yeah, well, it's a chunk, but uh, I had a couple think... lots late fifties. Lost a lot of money, a lot of money. Yeah, but the difference. I thought you were gonna show it to Stan Grossman. He passes on. Dang. Okay. I really love the uh, the screenwriting with these characters. They're doing a really good job setting the the tone, especially us knowing what is about to go down. It automatically gives that um, unique sense of tension and build up so i like that they portrayed that at the beginning of the film 
can do. But I'll, I'll talk to my boss. <laughs> these guys here, these guys, it's always the same. Wow. It's, for all the people that live out in North Dakota, are they doing a good job with, like, holding that slang? I hear it a little bit. Deal I needed them for, I may not need it anymore. Something's happening, see? Call him up? Yeah, well, see, I did that. And I haven't been able to get him, so I... Oh, snap. This is not good. So now that he's finally able to work something out with his father, or his wife's father, he's trying to call off the deal. Like, dude. I'm not sure if that's gonna happen. <laughs> uh, Chicago or John Hancock building, whatever. You never been to Minneapolis? Nope. <laughs> I appreciate the conversation between these two for some reason. It's pretty interesting. That's a geyser. I mean, whoa, Teddy, stand back, man. Shit. That man looks like Bruce Willis' father. <laughs> yeah, they exist, all right. I'm sure they do. But I can't read the serial numbers here. So if you read... Oh, man. This is, this is a very awkward exchange. This is very awkward indeed. Oh, man. Yeah, okay. God, no, 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 man. Just fax that right over no, 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 no. Fax it. I mean, send it over. I'll shoot it right. Jeez. Such an awkward exchange. Oh, my goodness. And I love how the camera's being shot, like, almost outside the window just to create that barrier. Kind of like us looking in. That was at home. Now, Katie, I got to admit, I was a little bit surprised when I first picked this up. This is Yo. an empty egg. <laughs> That's right, Dale. Well, how did Homie really is just walking up, just like. Casually scoping out the place in broad daylight. <laughs> Dang, I feel so sad for this girl, man. She's just trying to live her life. Meanwhile, her husband's trying to get her kidnapped. I assume if you're not interested, you won't mind if we move on it. Independently. Wow. Damn. Yikes. Oh, man. I feel like pieces are getting set up. It's so interesting how they're telling this story and they're cutting between different moments. It almost feels completely like discombobulating, but yet it still feels like it's building up. It's like not caring how you stack the Jengas. But yet it's still building, but it's all effed up. <laughs> Hun? <laughs> oh, buddy. You don't even understand what you've done. But now I'm wondering if he's going to move on with the plan now. Yeah, Wade, I, it's Jerry. I... Wade? Wade? It's Jerry. I, we got to talk. It's this is hilarious. <laughs> oh my! I mean, it's it's not in the context, but because of the context, in a weird way, like he's just rehearsing how he's gonna try and sound. All right, it's just the tags. I never put my tags on the car. I right, don't worry. I'll take care of this. How the heck are you gonna take care of this? You guys have a a sobbing body in the back seat. Maybe the best thing to do would be to take care of that right here in Brainerd. What's this, sir? My license and registration. Yeah, I'm oh boy. Compliance. Oh boy, this is not going to go well. Put that back in your pocket, please. And step out of the car, please, sir. Oh God, are you serious? Oh no! Oh, he tried to bribe him. Jeez. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Bruce Willis's father just capped that cop, yo. Like, what the heck?
It really is interesting because this is kind of sort of in the middle of nowhere. So events like these just, I don't know, for some reason, they have a lot more of an impact to them. I guess it's because we associate like a lot of, you know, places shot in cities. A lot of the stuff like this would happen, but I don't know. It just hits differently when you're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Oh, dang. Yo, this dude is no joke, man. This guy is no joke. Oh, my goodness, man. I love that this is shot. Damn. Man, this dude is cold-blooded, bro. He is no joke. Damn. Isn't he the guy from Until Dawn, too, by the way? That's insane. I don't know. Like, the murders in here, it, they just they just hit differently. There's like a blunt thud to them, you know? Damn. The same sort of situation... Could have been felt with, um, you know, the other film, you know, No Country for Old Men. Just the way the action was. It was just so brutal. It was so real. Like, you wanted to look away, but you couldn't because it's like, am I watching a movie here? Oh, yeah. Where's the state trooper? Back there, a good piece in the ditch next to his prowler. Okay. Wow, I love how they're just casually going about this. I mean, they're doing they're doing their job. I mean, she's she's able to really pinpoint the situation, so she's really good at what she does. It's just morning sickness. Well, that passed. <laughs> oh no. Oh, yeah. Warm made some eggs. Yeah? <laughs> I love the conversations between, like, well, just in this film so far. It's just, it's like, it's so weirdly casual, <laughs> casually morbid. Come on, Bushimi. I can't be laughing at this, man. <laughs> Damn. Norm, but you're better than them. You think so? You got Arby's all over me. These two are, are like so. Uh, so just pure. <laughs> Why are they so genuine? Ah, <laughs> uh, Norm's. Like, he seems like such a good guy. I hope he's not planning to get his wife kidnapped because she's a cop. Absent the receipt of those numbers by tomorrow afternoon, I will have to refer this matter to our legal department. Yeah. My patience is at an end. Yeah. Good day, sir. Yeah. Jeez. Man, dude. Things are not going well for you, buddy. And I can't say that I sympathize for you. <laughs> you just had your wife kidnapped. On the phone there, they're very... These guys are dangerous. All the more reason. I don't want you... With all due respect, Jerry, I don't want you mucking this up. Damn. <laughs> Damn. He's like, listen, man, you ain't the best person for this. Would you happen to know a good place for lunch in the downtown area? The Radisson. Oh, yeah? Is it reasonable? Yo, like... Again, like, I find it so interesting that... You know, the Coen brothers, they do a good job at fitting the mundane moments within a film such as this. And again, I, I go back to No Country because that's the other film I've seen from them that I know of. And the same thing applied on that, too, where mundane moments would just happen. And I'm not sure if it would fit to any bigger scale or scheme of it all, but it just... 
it just layered onto the story, which I, I, I really like. I think it gives more to the texture of the film. Now I know you've had some problems, struggling with the narcotics, some other entanglements. Currently on parole. So. Well. Yo, this dude is hilarious. <laughs> nope. Uh huh. <laughs> Yeah, but there's not a heck of a lot to discuss. <laughs> okay. Well, what about you, Mike? Are you married? <laughs> this is. Oh my yeah, goodness! This is what I'm talking I, about. Like, I was. The I, moments uh, here are just I, I like. To, you mind if I sit over here? Are just uh, so like. The they're you so textured. Over there, I prefer that. Do try to make a move and got blasted on the ether. Oh yeah, on the TV, and uh, I remember it. You know, I always liked you. Well, I always liked you. I much. always liked you so much. Oh God. Oh. Uh, I'm cringing. Help me. <laughs> oh, help me. It's okay, Mike. Jeez. Oh my goodness. Damn. She was probably just <laughs> looking to have a good time. <laughs> Jeez, man. It's okay, Mike. Drop that fucking money! No, Gene. No money. Is this a fucking joke here? <laughs> oh, my God. Happy now, asshole? What's with you people? You fucking Jeez, episode. man. Oh my goodness! What is happening here? Yo, that was... I was not expecting that. I was not expecting that at all. Damn. That went... <laughs> that went souther than south. That just went... Again, like, just how that entire sequence was portrayed. It was so, like, visceral and blunt. You're just kind of like, what the heck? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my goodness. That was really well done by the cinematography right there. Love that. Love that. Well, I'm I'm going to bed now. Yeah, what's your gameplay for this, man? Like like where where are you going afterwards? Like how how like what's the plan? It's completely it, it's it's over, man. Like what the heck? You know, I will say this. It really does feel like these characters aren't within a movie. You know, like these characters are just within this daily life. Again, I give shout outs to the Coen brothers and, you know, them crafting the stories like this because it does bring forth a sense of realism that I think expands greater than um, just it being a film trying to imitate that. Like, it almost taps into documentary. Not visually, but just the feeling you get from watching a documentary. And which is interesting because this is based off of a true story. So I think they really hit the nail on the head on that one, in my opinion. I'm sorry, sir. Ma'am, I answered your question. I answered the darn... I'm cooperating here. And there... Oh, man, dude, you are not... You are not... Oh, man. Dude, you are in deep, bro. You're about to reveal your cards, if not already. Fuck happened to her? Uh, she started shrieking, you know. Was that, was that blood on the... On the oven? Like, is she... Is she dead? What the heck was that? Oh, boy. Oh, 
What? This dude is insane. He is absolutely insane. Oh my goodness. Yo. Sierra, Tia Sierra. Oh snap, I really hope nothing bad happens to her, yo. Cause that dude is he's wild. He <laughs> Oh my god. He is just crazy. Some of these characters remind me of the characters from uh No Country. Like obviously she's like the sheriff. I forget what the psychopath's name was in No Country, but this dude reminds me of him. Oh my absolute goodness. You got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. Are you for real, man? Hey, oh my goodness. Yo, this is insane. This is crazy. I cannot believe... Yo, I was... Like, I, I heard the noise, but I just, what, I was not expecting him to literally be putting these bodies in a wood chipper. I just don't understand it. Mm. That's the same exact thing that the sheriff said in No Country. He just doesn't understand it anymore, you know? Wow. Golly, man. What an epic that was. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. You, you kind of deserve it, bro. You kind of deserve it, bro. Can't feel bad for you, man. I can't. I'm sorry. Wow. Two more months. Two more months. Guys, and that was Fargo. All right, everybody, and that wraps up Fargo. Guys, this was another really good film, you know, in my eyes. I, again, like, I am like, it's really, it's really cool being able to watch these type of films. And then especially, you know, after watching No Country for Old Men and piecing together what makes the Coen brothers style pop up and it's not like something as on the nose as uh you know i would say like paul thomas anderson or quentin tarantino um or just anybody in that regard whose style you can visually pinpoint be like oh yeah it's it's these directors you know um i think it's just it really just goes to show that you can create a style in multiple forms and assets of filmmaking. And in my opinion, I think the Coen brothers, at least from what I'm you know, putting together with the two films I watched of them, this one and uh, No Country for Old Men, is how they are able to depict daily life primarily in areas that are very isolated. You know, if I were to create an example of a movie we actually watched on this channel, Wind River, um, you know, what I really admired about that film is that they took the daily life of just these backcountry, just these places where it almost is abandoned by society. And when I say society, I'm talking about like the metropolis of where we usually see these movies, you know, specifically with crime. And then they isolate them in these mundane uh, backcountry, uh, uh, very isolated areas, and what that does is that it it it, confl it conflicts with you know these mundane moments and these mundane lifestyles with this absurd, <laughs> very brutal murders, you know. And when those things collide, it makes for a very uh, interesting watch. And a very d different watch because 
your brain for some reason it's like is this even a movie you know like it's trying to figure out what it's looking at because it's not as like you know we saw heat you know previously on this channel it's not as like you know hollywood like that and i'm only saying that you know because of the scale of it but you know heat took place in los angeles downtown los angeles where that heist was and i think the beautiful thing that the coen brothers do is that they're able to pick that sort of feeling and put it somewhere completely isolated completely in the middle of nowhere but yet it almost amplifies that feeling and then when everything is all said and done it's like okay now it's time for the next day very interesting you guys tell me what your thoughts on you know that regard but that's just kind of my thoughts on you know the coen brothers and their style and then obviously you know fargo and as well as no country for old men so guys this was a really good watch in my opinion i like films like this because it really does uh allow for different storytelling and it, it, it allows me to you know look at it differently and you know in a way that's you know very challenging uh just for me as a filmmaker and also as an audience member and i think that it knocked the, the you know the ball out the park in both ends so guys let me know what your thoughts are as well and if you want to see the full length definitely check out the patreon link below but like always guys stay healthy stay hydrated because we are just getting started also happy holidays purple jacket pocket full of weed Everything that I should ever need Grab some matches cause they give them free Just like my time Hair pulled back in the backseat